Hey y'all, it's Lindsay, and I kind of wanted to talk with you about where my head's been lately. For about a month now, things have been a little bit stressful here at my home. We have had um, Jared traveling quite a bit. We have had a lot of schoolwork to work through. Spring has finally arrived here in Wisconsin. I feel like I've said that a few times, but now we are down to one, two, three, four, five. We're down to five snow piles, so we can see more grass than snow, it's a praise, we're pumped, yay, spring. That's been a change, it's been nice, it's been warm enough to be outside on a consistent basis for the girls. And Lauren is going through some serious teething with her canines and just, you know, she's 19 months old, she's developing a lot of new skills and becoming even more aware about her environment and she is becoming more irrational as the days go on because communication is something we're still trying to uh, develop with her. Like she talks all the time, but trying to get her to listen and just directing and redirecting her has been a full-time job for like four people. We've been dealing with a lot of those things, which is fine because you know, it's a season, it's a very short season, but it's been very stressful. I just recently had my birthday, which was good, but that means I willingly decided to eat some chocolate chip cookies I had baked for the girls. They were white flour, white sugar, regular chocolate chips, just like completely the opposite of keto. And I feel okay about that, but it kind of spiraled me downward into a deep need to have more sweet treats but make them keto friendly. After having those cookies, I decided to go on another egg fast because I find that whenever I get that sweet flavor in my mouth, all I want is sweet foods. And I only eat other flavors, savory, spicy, bitter, any of those things. I only eat those things so that I can have sweeter treats. And that is not a good choice for me because I then feel the need to eat all of something. If I make an eight by eight pan of my homemade Twix bars that are keto, low carb friendly, I will want to eat them all until they're all gone because I have to complete the pan, it has to be done. And I have the extremist personality. I don't have um, a personality that's really well suited to moderation like oh just get a little taste and you're fine no that doesn't work well for me it's one of those things and and that was me trying to be moderate so just for me personally being moderate is not a skill set that i have well developed it's something that i would like to develop but at the same time instead of trying to fight against my own limitations that I acknowledge, I mean like obviously Christ in Christ I can overcome anything, but maybe these limiting factors are a part of me for a reason. Instead of me fighting against them, maybe I need to learn how to work with them for my own health. And being moderate with sweet treats or consuming things that are natural sweeteners and things to that effect is not what's best for me. And I know a lot of people who follow Trim Healthy Mama, they can go through and they can have, you know, a piece of Trimtastic cake or a cupcake or one serving of skinny chocolate or I like to make Jack for Jared. So it's just like these various things, they can handle that sort of moderation and be content and happy and good to go on their way. But that's not, that's not me. And maybe I need to stop trying to force that to be myself when I know that's not, that's not who I am and it's not where I am. So I decided to go on this egg fast, like I've said it already, and that has been a very valuable tool in my toolbox for getting myself back onto track with eating savory foods, eating um, healthy foods for myself, like, focusing more on getting the nutrient dense things that I actually need. And I have used this egg, this previous egg fast. I didn't measure myself before or weigh myself before and I haven't measured or weighed since, but I feel like my clothes are not fitting differently after this particular egg fast, but I needed 
to utilize the egg fast as a tool to stop the sweet cravings, not to lose inches. So that's sort of where the, um, where the focus was for this particular egg fast. My very first egg fast, I dropped a ton of inches. I talked about it in a video previously, but this time around, my sole focus was just reset my brain, reset my palate. Let's get back to ground zero where all we want to do is eat savory foods, not sweet foods. And all of this brings me up to my next um, point that I wanted to make. I am definitely going to be testing out carnivore for myself. For my birthday this year, several of my friends scooped me up and took me out to dinner. But before they did that, they gave me a cooler filled with liver. <laughs> and I know that seems like a weird gift, but I was so pumped about that because I, in my research about the carnivore diet, the liver is the most valuable organ for all of the nutrients we need. Everything that I've read has suggested that consuming, you know, as little as three ounces of liver per week is more than enough to get all of the um, vitamins, minerals, micronutrients that your body truly needs to optimally function. So they gave me this and I was so excited but I've never consumed liver in my life to my knowledge. So I decided I need to figure out a way to integrate this into my diet so that I am making it a nutritionally sound diet. And I think for me, I'm shifting my mindset more toward food while it is delicious and while it is a fellowship activity and it is a group activity and it's a way for us to um, enjoy time with people. The main goal behind consuming food is to obtain the nutrients that we need to function well. And so I needed something to help me figure out how to get this liver in and I want the girls to be eating liver and if Jared so chooses to participate with me on this then I would love to get liver into his diet. So I went through and I bought a meat grinder. That seems excessive, Lindsay, you've never even had liver. Why would you invest money in a meat grinder? Well, I thought that if I can grind up some liver and incorporate it into ground beef for burgers or taco meat or any of those various things for meatballs, um, then it would be a little bit more palatable because from what I understand, beef liver has a very um, distinct taste. Chicken livers tend to be a little bit more mild and a little bit more uh, a little bit more readily accepted um, by discerning palates, I suppose. But I bought myself a meat grinder so that I could add these livers to my burger meat and try to incorporate it that way so that I can acclimate our palates to the liver. And here it is. I'm so pumped about this, you have no clue. I wound up getting the KitchenAid all metal food grinder. This one, it was on Amazon. I just think that this will be a great way to incorporate the liver into our diet. Um, my friends also gave me a beef heart, which is really cool. I've never eaten heart before. They also gave me some oxtail, which is really, really fun. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to test these things out. I'm excited to be more intentional with my diet. I already love steak. I don't really know too many people who eat meat that dislike steak, so that's not an issue for us. But these organ meats, and obviously the heart is a muscle, are something that I'd really like to be intentional with getting because that's where vitamin C is for the carnivore diet. That's where you're going to get your bioavailable vitamin A, all of your micronutrients, like it's just, it's a powerhouse of nutrition in a compact package. <laughs> Nutritionally, I feel as though I've started to come full circle. I started at Standard American Diet growing up. I moved into Weston A. Price Foundation, Nourishing Traditions, like all of those things. Did that for a while in conjunction with some Standard American Diet type stuff. I didn't eliminate sugar at the time. I got into fermenting foods and cultures and those sorts of things and then um, when we moved here to Wisconsin, I jumped into Trim Healthy Mama for a short time, went full-blown keto, did that till we got pregnant, went back to standard American diet, and now in the, in the cycle, I am back up to nourishing traditions, concepts for like how to prepare foods, and doing that in a carnivore, 
high fat, low carb way so that I can try to be my most optimal self. Who knows how long this will last for me because clearly I tend to cycle through things. But for right now, I think that this is a way of eating and a lifestyle that I, I can be excited about and I can prevent myself from consuming a lot of these sweeteners that really sort of charge me to be more driven to eat more sweets. They cause so many more cravings for me. So going carnivore, I feel like will eliminate that need for sugar or sweet flavors or um, just, you know, those kinds of things. I do appreciate some vegetables and want to continue to eat some vegetables. So I like the concept of carnivore-ish. I think I will allow vegetables like about a half cup to a one cup serving to be in my dinner meal every day if I so choose. If I don't wanna have them that day, I'm not gonna force it to happen. But for the most part, I would like to keep vegetables to a limited quantity at a specific time and see how this goes with my body because I would really like to ensure that I'm well nourished. That's where I'm at right now. And I am hopeful that I see some kind of a positive change. I'm hopeful that if I see negative changes, I can discern those quickly and redirect myself. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now. I've got a lot of videos to edit and I would like to get that done. But in this season with Lauren, it's been very tricky. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I will talk with you in the next video.